If you thought Canada could not have fallen any more than 10,064 Canadians euthanized, uh, state-sanctioned murder, uh, if you ask other people, uh, or maids, medical assistance in dying, 10,064 in 2021. And I, I, st I think we still don't know what the numbers are for 2022. They're going to be more. Um, we talked about the idea that, you know, potentially the government would push people into maids into euthanasia, what, what the Nazis used to call mercy killings. Uh, they used to mercy kill the mentally ill, uh, the, men, the, 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 the mentally uh, disabled. They called it mercy killings. Uh, the Trudeau regime calls it medical assistance in dying, and they want to expand it to the mentally ill. They want to expand it to minors. They want to expand it. Apparently, at least the, the Canadian population doesn't mind if they expand it to the homeless. It doesn't matter if you're not actually terminally ill. If you, if you want to die, the government will, will will happily oblige. And I said, well, this is going to really open the open the floodgates to a black market for, for organs. Well, it seems that the government's one step ahead of me, one step ahead of the sinister uh, Orwellian dystopian hellscape that I envisioned in my own mind. This is coming out of Nova Scotia from CBC News. Avery's law makes organ tissue donation automatic in New Brunswick with some exceptions. Understand the words that you are reading right now, people. Organ tissue donation in New Brunswick, it's the second province in Canada, will be automatic with some exceptions. Province becomes second in jurisdiction in Canada after Nova Scotia to move to this model. It's called, we're going to find out why it's called Avery's Law, but it's called Avery's Law after a boy named Avery who died in a car accident. And apparently the parents wanted to, to give his organs. So it's not even a question of deemed consent. They wanted to give his organs, but apparently the infrastructure wasn't there and it wasn't ready and they wanted to give his eyes. And I'm, I'm, it's, it's a terrible thing to actually not be able to even make afterlife use of, of, a, of a young, beautiful boy. This law now deems consent for organ and tissue harvesting. And you have to understand something and we're going to get to it. You, you not only don't have to be dead for this, you cannot be dead for this. This happens with brain death or what they call, I think they called it physical death before actual death. New Brunswick has become the second jurisdiction in Canada to adopt a presumed consent model for organ and tissue donation. Under amendments to the Human Tissue Gift Act passed last week, most New Brunswickers 19 and older will automatically be presumed to agree to donate their organs and tissues when they die unless they opt out, also known as deemed consent, when they die. Just let that float around in your head. Because what you're going to find out is that they're not dead when this deemed consent is presented and the decision is made by the coroner. People with an intellectual disability will be exempt, along with anyone who has lived in the province for less than a year. It's expected to take at least two years before the new system can be implemented. Under the current system, New Brunswickers who want to donate their organs and tissues have to check the appropriate box like I've done on my license. Very good news, says this doctor. It's very good news, according to Dr. Rémi Leblanc, uh, head of the intensive care unit of the hospital in Moncton. Yada, yada, yada. He believes it will increase the number of organs available for transplants and significantly decrease the number of people who die waiting. Of course, if they die waiting because they're refused to transplant because they're not vaccinated, that's fine, because that actually happens in Canada already. Listen to this. He thinks it will increase. No shit Sherlock, medical PhD Sherlock, it will increase the number. At what cost? The more potential donors we have, they're not potential donors now. They're deemed donors. The more lives we will save, except the lives of the donors, but we'll, we'll get there because when it says after they die, just let that float around in your head. It will make a big difference. No doubt. 65 new Brunswickers currently on the wait list for transplant. Across Canada, out of the 4,400 people waiting for organs, 250 people die each year. What the new law will change on a daily basis is that everyone will be considered a potential donor in the event of a neurological tragedy leading to brain death. Remember when I said, let this float around in your head, where they said when they die, they presumed to agree to donate their organs when they die. They're it's a neurological death that they're talking about. What the new law will change on a daily basis is that everyone will be considered a potential donor in the event of a neurological tragedy leading to brain death and a declaration of physical death, according to very rigorous uh, criteria. It can, also affect, it can also affect a neurological trauma without brain death, but with a patient in a vegetative state. We can then have the agreement of the family if the death occurs within a reasonable time. 
What happens if they don't have family? Who, who then defends for this organ harvesting based on a deemed uh, consent of someone who's neurologically dead? 90% of the citizens are in favor of organ donation, but only 25 to 30% have signed their organ donor card. Hmm, what's the solution to that problem? Maybe awareness, social awareness. Maybe 90% are in favor of organ donation, but some have religious reasons for which they don't want to do it. Others have spiritual reasons. Others have, I don't know, superstitious reasons. Maybe if 90% of the population support it, maybe the campaign should be awareness for those people as to how they can do it and not compulsion or deemed uh, consent for everybody except the, the mentally challenged and uh, people who have lived in the province more than a year. An organ donor can save the lives of up to eight, it can save up to eight lives and the tissue can improve the lives of 75 others, he said. Okay. Received unit. Oh, the bill presented by the liberals received unanimous support in the third reading. Okay. Bill 52, the hormone, the hormone, the human organ tissue donation act, also known as Avery's law. Why is it called Avery's law? Okay, they suggested the name in, 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 in honor of Avery Castle, who died in a car crash in Miramichi. I was actually in Miramichi. It's a beautiful place in, in, in 2019, along with three other teens. That's terrible. Avery's parents wanted to donate his organs and tissues, including his eyes, but were told no one from the donation team run by Horizon Health was available to retrieve his organs. Let me ask you this, legislator. If the purpose of this law was to resolve this issue, which is that the parents wanted to donate their kids' organs, not deemed consent, but actual consent, but they couldn't do it because the infrastructure wasn't in place. How the hell does deemed consent for neurologically dead people resolve, answer that problem? How? It doesn't. It's overreach using the pretext of tragedy as the basis for the overreach. You know, you know how you resolve the problem of the infrastructure not being there to accommodate willing donors? Put the infrastructure there for willing donors, not create deemed willing. Oh, but it's only by creating deemed willing donors from the mentally, uh, neurologically dead that we can justify the, the infrastructure. Horse crap. It's named after a kid who died whose organs couldn't be used because the government couldn't do its job properly, I presume. And so the way to resolve that issue, address that issue, is to deem consent for everybody in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. Oh, okay. We've come a long way to see this bill finally come to our stance today. So I'm excited to see this, especially after the last couple of weeks we've had in the House, said Conroy. I certainly think that everybody can agree it's nice to come together on something for a change. It's been a long couple of weeks. Okay, wait until you hear this. Nova Scotia is the only other jurisdiction in Canada that has adopted a presumed consent organ donation model. The law change was passed in 2019, took effect in 2021, once supports were put in place to handle anticipated increased donations. Okay. Listen to this. Hold on one second. It's going to blow your mind when you read this. Adults who choose not to register a decision are not exempt and will be... Oh, hold on, let me read this. Health Minister Bruce Fitch said he expects significant investment will be required to implement the new model in New Brunswick. Among the changes needed is a new registry where New Brunswickers can register their decision to consent to donate all or some of their organs known as express consent or opt out of donating. Adults who choose not to register a decision are not exempt and are not exempt, will be considered potential donors. Can you imagine the government looking at your body and saying, you look like a potential donor there. Ooh, yeah, you, you run races. Hey, you got a nice strong heart in you. You got a nice strong heart. Man, I, I may want that heart, son. Oh, my goodness. Making the decision. The legislation sets out that death must be determined by at least two physicians, quote, who have skill and knowledge in conducting these specific medical tests established by the medical professional the profession for determining death. A physician who has been who has had an association with a proposed organ recipient that might influence the physician's judgment may not take part in the determination of the death of the organ donor. The chief coroner may allow the removal of organs or tissue of a person, quote, notwithstanding that death has not yet occurred, if, in the opinion of the physician, the death of the person is imminent by reason of injury or death. They don't even have to wait for you to be dead to harvest your organs. Let that sink in, and I'll read it again. The chief coroner may allow the removal of organs or tissue of a person, quote, notwithstanding that they're not dead yet, if in their, in their opinion, you're going to die soon. I think you're going to die soon by reason of injury or disease. What can possibly go wrong? 
When a person dies in a hospital or circumstances where the coroner would be notified or is close to death in the opinion of a physician, the hospital or chief coroner must, as soon as possible, provide the organ donation program and tissue bank with the information, such as the person's age, the cause or expected cause of death, expected cause of death, the time of death, if the death has occurred, or any other information. The law prohibits dealing in body parts. I'm sorry, that sounds exactly like what you're already going to be doing with this. No person shall buy, sell, or otherwise deal directly or indirectly for valuable consideration of any human organ. They've got all the safety measures in place. Two doctors, two doctors making a decision that if you're, if you're close enough to death, the coroner can come and say, you're close enough, dude. No, no, no miracles for you, baby. I'm taking your eyes. They look good. Holy hell. 